By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 The fact that only his family responded does not invalidate Noah's ministry nor God's grace in delaying judgment and giving fair warning. Rather, it confirms both. The Spirit was clearly instrumental in all aspects of this oft-popularized series of miracles, guiding and empowering everything from the initial commands to Noah, the construction of the ark, the assembling of the animals, the protection of everyone in the ark when the flood came on, all the way to the final exit from the ark when the flood waters had abated. Only through the Spirit could Noah have done what he did. Only through the Spirit can any of us do what the Lord calls us to do, especially in times and circumstances of particular pressure and suffering, following the example of our Lord. And only through the Spirit will we, upon whom the ends of the ages have come, 1 Corinthians 11.10, be able to properly prepare for and then endure the tribulation ahead. Noah's obedience to the Lord in preparing for the coming catastrophe in precisely the way the Lord instructed him should be proverbial, more so than the ark, which merely demonstrates that obedience. At present, we believers alive on earth today have much less time than Noah did to prepare for what is coming. But like Noah, we certainly know how to prepare, through spiritual growth and advance through the truth. When our floodwaters come, may we be ready as Noah was ready. But concerning the times and the seasons, that is, the eschatological timeline and the specific events within it, brothers, you have no need for anyone to write you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord, that is the second advent preceded by the tribulation, is coming just like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and safety, at that precise time destruction will fall swiftly upon them, just like labor pains on a pregnant woman. But you, brothers, are not in darkness that this day of the Lord should catch you out like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So let us therefore not sleep like the rest of unbelieving mankind, but be awake and alert. For those who sleep do so at night, and those who get drunk do so at night. But since we are of the day, let us put on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of hope, that is, confidence, of salvation. Because God has not appointed us for wrath, but for taking possession of our salvation, that is, fully gained at the resurrection, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died on our behalf, that whether we stay awake or sleep, that is, pass on to heaven, we will be alive together with him on that day of resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 10. Into which ark? It is interesting to note that this passage is the only place in Scripture, outside of Genesis chapters 6 and 7, where the ark is even mentioned. Elsewhere, such as in the passages referenced and cited, it is Noah who is remembered because it is his victory of faith which is significant, not the ark which is merely a manifestation of that faith. In terms of applying scripture, we can say, based on the information given, that the ark may be seen as analogous to our personal spiritual growth, because it is the truth resident in our hearts by faith that will constitute the means by which the Spirit will deliver us through the tribulation, should that be our lot from the Lord, just as the ark Noah had prepared was the means God used to deliver him. It should be noted that while the word ark in the phrase the ark of the covenant is in English and in Greek, the same word as that used of Noah's ark, in Hebrew they are different words, Aaron, Tebha, respectively. The dimensions are also not exactly proportional, 2.5 by 1.5 by 1.5 versus 300 by 50 by 30 in cubits, which is approximately 18 inches, for the former and latter respectively. Nevertheless, the two arcs are similar in that they both represent Jesus Christ. The symbolism of the Ark of the Covenant as a type of Christ is more widely taught, but Noah's Ark also represents Jesus Christ, as our passage makes clear. Peter uses Noah and his family to represent believers here and now, and their experience is recalled to guide and motivate us. Just as Noah and his family are baptized into the Ark, with the help of the Holy Spirit, whose ministry is the focus and the point of this digression on Peter's part, 
and thus brought through the otherwise destructive waters, so we believers today are baptized into Christ by that same Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 through 6 and Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 and are brought safe by Him through this world of threats and troubles by responding to the Spirit's leadership and guidance. Now the one who has given us security in regard to Christ together with you, and who has anointed us, that is, with the Spirit, is God. Yes, He has also sealed us and given us His pledge of the Spirit in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22 In Christ you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, in whom I say, when you believed, you were sealed by the Spirit of promise, the Holy Spirit, who is a pledge of our inheritance for redeeming its preservation, that is, safeguarding our resurrection and reward in every way, for the purpose of the praise of His glory in eternity. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for a day of redemption, that is, the resurrection. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 The Holy Spirit is the one who keeps us safe in Jesus Christ, we are sealed by Him, with complete security unto our ultimate deliverance at the resurrection, as long as we remain in Christ through following the Spirit's guidance. Just as Noah and his family were kept safe in the ark, a type of Christ, but certainly would not have been safe had they ventured out of the ark before the time, so also we must abide in Jesus Christ until His return by relying on the power of the Spirit. Just as they were brought safely through the water, so our Lord will keep us safe in Himself by the aid of His Holy Spirit, and bring us safely through this life, even through the great flood of the tribulation, if only we take care not to abandon Him, our only true help and hope in this world. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5 Here is a trustworthy saying, if we died with Him, we will also live with Him. If we persevere, we will also reign with Him. If we disown Him, He will also disown us. If we are faithless, He will remain faithful, for He cannot disown Himself. 2 Timothy 2.11-13 The baptism which now saves you. And analogously, it is this true baptism of the Spirit which now saves you. You are saved not through any literal washing away of filth from your flesh, but through an appeal to God for a clean conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.21 The word baptism here has caused many problems of misinterpretation within this passage, and in verse 21 in particular. First, pace the word water does not occur in the Greek here. That is an interpretation, and a grossly incorrect one at that, since it completely reverses what Peter is saying. The baptism mentioned here is a dry baptism, not a wet one. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2 As is evident in this passage, and in a number of other biblical cases as well, baptisms in Scripture do not always involve water. Literal water baptism involves dunking one thing into another so that the two merge in some way, the thing dunked being identified with the medium into which it is dunked. So the baptism into Moses and other scriptural baptism, which are dry and not wet, are metaphorical identifications rather than literal wet dunkings. In other words, the Israelites were dunked into Moses, but not in a wet way. They were identified with Moses so as to receive the blessings which came Moses' way. They were not destroyed for his sake, for example, Exodus chapter 32, verse 10 through 14, but delivered with him, for example, Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 through 15. The most important baptism in Scripture is, of course, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, by which is meant the Spirit's placing all who believe into union with Christ so that we become one in him. We are specially identified with Christ by being placed into Him by the Holy Spirit. It is precisely that baptism which this passage is speaking of. Just as Noah and his family were baptized, identified with, entered into the ark, so believers today are baptized, identified with, entered into Jesus Christ.
that is the analogy. And just as Noah and his family were brought safely through the destructive waters of the Great Flood by virtue of thus being in the Ark, a type of Christ, sealed within it by the Spirit, so we believers today are brought safely through this dark world, even through the tribulation if need be, by virtue of our being in Christ, sealed securely in Him by that same Holy Spirit. This is the baptism which saves us, not water baptism, which in fact has no proper place in the church today.